sports fans, welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Jason Aaron Goldberg, and this is Card Collecting Shenanigans. While you're here, hope you'll subscribe. It's Throwback Thursday, and you know what that means. Old stuff. Today, the Wayback Machine takes us back to 1954 to look at my first vintage Larry Doby card and talk about a guy who is amazing. Uh, we all know Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, but Larry Doby integrated the American League. As I mentioned, I did not really set out this week to do a lot of stuff on social justice and racial justice, but I'm a guy who believes in destiny. The stars have aligned that way. And to that end, we have Hank Greenberg in the dugout today because on this day in 1956, Hank Greenberg was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. As I mentioned a few episodes ago, Hank Greenberg, along with his buddy Bill Veck, had been very early champions of integration in Major League Baseball well before Jackie Robinson. Uh, Bill Veck actually in 1942 wanted to buy the Phillies and let his plan be known to then-commissioner and avowed racist Kennesaw Mountain Landis, incidentally who they want to take Landis's name off of the MVP trophy, um, and told him he wanted to buy the Phillies and load it up with Negro League players. Landis said absolutely not, sold the team to somebody else. A couple years later, he's able to buy the Indians, and they get to work on integrating the team. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Larry Doby Starting with this Archives card, before we get into the good vintage, uh, got to thank Archives for helping me out here a little bit with some show and tell. Um, so Larry Doby, actually three-sport athlete in high school, All-State, all that awesome stuff, um, started his professional career at age 17 when he signed with the Newark Eagles of the Negro League. Uh, World War II breaks out. He goes overseas. He comes back in 1946, at which point he helps the Eagles win the Negro League World Series along with this guy. Monty Irvin, and they beat the KC Monarchs, led by Satchel Paige, who later becomes his teammate on the Indians. Uh, when he signed uh, with the Eagles, he actually had been planning to go to college, and he wanted to protect his amateur status, so he actually signed under an alias, and get this, the alias was Larry Walker. So we have modern-day Larry Walker tied to Larry Doby, just fun little facts that I think are awesome. Uh, so we all know that Jackie Robinson integrates baseball, but as the New York Times wrote, in glorifying those who are first, the second is often forgotten. That couldn't be more true than in the case of Larry Doby. You got to remember, for every National League ballpark that Jackie Robinson integrates, weeks later, Larry Doby is integrating every American League ballpark. Now, in his first season in 47, he doesn't play all that much. And after his first season, he actually winds up being a multi-sport athlete, signing with the American Basketball League. Now he's second in baseball, but he has a lot of firsts in his life, and this is one of them. He becomes the first black player in that league. So he basically integrates professional basketball. Um, when he gets signed by the Indians, by Bill Veck, now, Bill Veck did not want to promote it. He kind of wanted to surprise people. He actually was quoted as saying, one afternoon when the team trots onto the field, a Negro player will be out there with it. Uh, so he, signed, he buys out his Eagles contract, which at that time is unheard of. Uh, and so he buys out the contract for $15,000. And the owner of the Eagles actually tells him, if Larry Doby were white, this would have been $100,000. And so... Plays out that first season, plays pretty well, but kind of, you know, coming off the bench, nothing crazy to report. But in his second season, 1948, he takes the Indians to the World Series. He hits 318, he wins it with Satchel Paige. A first, he becomes the first black player along with Satchel Paige to win a World Series. Another first, he becomes the first black player to hit a home run in the World Series. Uh, he has some other seconds as well. He becomes the second black manager in Major League Baseball after Frank Robinson. Now, before we look at the vintage here, I just want to say as, as Larry Doby ends his career, uh, when he was playing, he actually was managed by this guy, all Jewish team member Lou Boudreau. Uh, as talking about being second all the time, uh, Bob Feller actually compared him to Buzz Aldrin which I think is a great comparison as well, right? Second man on the moon. 
As uh, Larry Doby ends his career, he's a seven-time All-Star, World Series champion, two-time home run champion. Indians retired as number 14. He's got a statue outside of the ballpark in Cleveland, and the MLB inducted him into the Hall of Fame in 1998 on the Veterans Committee. Let's take a look at the old stuff. Kaboom! What a beautiful, beautiful card. I am enamored by it. I had my eye on this card for a while because it's now a double PC card that I'm going to start chasing more Larry Doby because, you know it, Yankee Stadium facade in the background of a non-Yankee player card. 54 was a huge year for Larry Doby. In 1954, Indians had 111 wins. They win the AL pennant. He comes in second in AL MVP voting. He led the league in RBI and home runs. He was on the All-Star team, and another first. He becomes the first black player to hit a home run in the All-Star game. Like I said, this guy's life is just spectacular. It's amazing. Uh, I encourage you to look into him after you wrap up here. Uh, And I was trying to talk fast and go through a lot because it's opening day. We're all going to be watching some baseball uh, very soon. But the card itself, uh, I looked at a lot of them, you know, 54, they're, often you see fading, they're in bad condition. So when I saw this one, I jumped on and I got it for $17. Very well centered, a little off top to bottom, not a big deal to me. Uh, the coloring is really, really nice. You got to remember back in this time, coloring is a different process. Uh, it's like colorizing a movie after black and white. Uh, so the colors really pop, right? The greens are a unique green. The blue and the red and the uniform is, is unique. It pops in a beautiful way. Even the bat is kind of a unique yellow. Um, on the back, I did notice when I got it in my hand, a little bit of you know what they call veining, but on the front, you can't see it at all. And so I could care less. And I'm not a grader, so for me, this is just an awesome card to have. Oh, man. I'm so excited to start chasing some Larry Doby cards now. I hope you guys will do the same because this guy, just an unsung hero of baseball. Actually, after he retired uh, as a multi-sport guy, he became director of communications for the New Jersey Nets from 1980 to 89. He actually was a neighbor uh, of Yogi Berra. Uh, in retirement and he and Yogi and their kids would all play together uh, just became very very good friends in retirement another fun fact things I just love to learn about people Uh, before I close out the episode I did pick up one other 1954 card along with this one adding to the original Nuke Lalouche collection Mickey McDermott 1954 Bowenies with the Washington Senators Of course, uh, you know, I talk a lot about Mickey McDermott, the classic sold to the Red Sox by his father at the age of 15 for $5,000 and two truckloads of Ballantine beer. You know, actually, another fun fact I did not know that I, uh, in researching today's episode, just read up on. uh, July 14th, 1946, at 17 years old, Mickey threw a no-hitter in double-A. Arguably, maybe, there's not really a record, the youngest guy to ever throw a no hitter in uh, professional baseball even though it's double a and again great condition i think i got this one for like four bucks really well centered again color beautiful really excited to add that one to the mickey mcdermott collection there you go everybody i hope you enjoyed it please do leave a comment let me know what you thought of today's throwback thursday looking forward to reading those enjoy the season Slam that like button, make sure you're subscribed to all your friends, and I'll see you next time in the broadcast booth.